Metals form these crystalline structures and this greatly affects their properties. But to understand this, we must first be familiar with the metallic bonding model. What we have with metals are metal cations surrounded by a sea of delocalized electrons. And this is what it looks like. This greatly affects their property of metals. And if you haven't looked at my other video and you do not understand any of this, please watch that first before you continue with this video. So, what happens when metals form from liquid is that they slowly form these crystal structures. And these are regular lattices of the metallic bonding model. So each of these are cations surrounded by a sea of delocalized electrons. And gradually they grow until these form these individual crystals with grain boundaries in between. When a molten metal solidifies, the atoms arrange themselves into definite patterns called crystal structures. These crystal structures grow uniformly in all directions within each developing crystal. As the metal cools, these crystals are confined by the adjacent developing crystals, forming grains. The line of intersection between grains is called a grain boundary. Because the grains form independently, their crystal structures develop tilted in various directions. So, when the metals crystallize from the molten form, the crystals form randomly and they're arranged randomly with these breaks in between, which can be the metal's weak points, also known as grain boundaries. If we blow up this section here and look at it under a microscope, you can see here the grain structure of the metals. This is just these individual lattices of cations surrounded by their sea of delocalized electrons with the grain boundaries in between. So it's where these lattices have grown and they don't quite fit together perfectly. So the regular lattice is disrupted at the point where one crystal meets another. So at these points here, and these are called grain boundaries. And it's the arrangement and the size of the individual crystals which affects the properties of the metals. These properties importantly are how malleable or hard or how brittle the metal is. If we have small crystals, such as in this diagram here, you will form a harder but a more brittle metal. And the reason for this is that cracks can move quite easily and quickly across the metal. However, if you've got larger crystals, you'll form a softer metal, but it'll be more malleable, so it's more flexible. That's because cracks will take longer to get across the metal. And this is just a picture here, or a animation which shows when you're applying force the metal crystals can move in relation to one another and that will affect the malleability of the metal. So work hardening. If we change the size of the crystals we can change the properties of the crystals and hammering or working cold metals can cause these crystal grains to rearrange. Remember, the smaller the grain size, the harder the metal will be. And this is because the grains are packed closely together. However, small grain size also means these cracks can move easily across. So it's a much more brittle metal. Bending also rearranges the crystal grains. And if you get a paper clip and you bend it five, six, seven times, it will eventually snap. 
This is because you're causing smaller crystals to form and smaller crystals give you a stronger but a more brittle metal. Heat treatment. Three types of heat treatment can also affect the crystal structure in a metal and these are annealing, quenching or tempering and I'm going to discuss each of those. Annealing. Annealing involves heating the metal to a very high temperature and then cooling it very slowly. This causes large crystals to form and with large crystals we have this type of structure here. So we get a softer but a less brittle metal. So it's more malleable. So we've got slow cooling here and we've got larger crystals forming. So when we heat, these cations move apart from one another because they've got more energy. But when you cool them down slowly, they form crystalline structures. So we'll cool it down and they form these individual crystals. Slow cooling allows larger crystals to form. So annealed metals are more malleable and softer than a normal metal. Quenching. Quenching involves heating a metal to a moderate temperature and then cooling it quickly. So you'll often see this in the olden days with the blacksmiths where they dip the hot uh, metal into the water and you get that big fizzing sound. I like to remember quenching. Quenching, you quench your first, uh, thirst. So it involves cooling quickly because you're trying to cool yourself down quickly. What happens here is that small crystals form. So you get this structure and remember that small crystals will make your metal harder but it will also make it more brittle because these cracks can form very quickly and easily across the metal. So when we cool it quickly we'll have small crystals forming. And here again, we're heating the metal, the cations move apart from each other, cooling it quickly gets these smaller crystals forming. The last form of heat treatment is called tempering and this involves reheating the quenched metal but to a lower temperature. This reduces the brittleness and this is what the samurais used to use to make their swords which are some of the sharpest and hardest metals in the world.